My name is Sarah Omondi. Um, I'm married. We have three children, three adult children. One is married. Mm. We have been married for about um, 30 years now. And um, we have lived together um, as a family, all five of us, until when she got married. <laughs> Yeah, so th that, that was the first one to, to live. Yeah, otherwise we just a close family. We just need together like that. And that's it. Okay, she's the uh, what one in the family? She's the first one. Okay. She's the first one. Okay, so let me ask. Mm -hmm. Being the first born, close-knit family, and here she's living to get married, how was that <laughs> for you? Um, nothing... Uh, but as such, it was a joy. Because um, what does a mother want for their daughter? It's to find a man that uh, they will love, a man um, that God has appointed, and they get married. I was happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, I, I, I got married at one point. My mama was happy. We have not seen anyone being sad at home that one has gotten married as such. Yeah, but we, we were happy. I particularly was happy for her. <laughs> That question is always very <laughs> strange, but um, um, so I'm Joyce Omondi Wahiga, and I am a gospel minister. Um, I'm also a international development professional, and um, I just I love God, I love people, and I want to make an impact in this world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of personality, are you the outgoing? Are you the indoor? Definitely you... not outgoing. <laughs> I'm very, very introverted. Um, so I'm not shy, but I am introverted. I, I do like quiet space. Um, I'm the type of person who drives and there's no radio, there's no anything playing. Um, but, you know, I can be energetic around the people I care about. So I know my mom is thinking, hmm, because sometimes I'm such a noisemaker. <laughs> but generally, I am an introvert, right? Yeah, she is. <laughs> she is. She likes to keep things to us. I've known her as a very private girl from very early an age. Yeah. yeah. And at some point that worried me, but uh, <laughs> she knows how to control it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so our relationship was private, actually. It was very secret. It's only that 10 days to the wedding, it kind of got out. But people didn't even know we were dating. Um, so, you know, 10 days too is when now we started getting calls from magazines and places and TV shows saying, hey, can we interview you? Can we? And I was just like, no. <laughs> um, so, you know, for all the while that we dated, nobody knew, nobody knew about Rirasho. I mean, except our guests. But it wasn't public knowledge and for me that was the best way to do it because um it's about it's about our marriage it's not just mm. the wedding it's it's the marriage that's most important even beyond mm. the wedding day yeah and where do you think the media was interested well i mean i guess we're both um public personalities in our own right i mean he's a successful really great news anchor um i was in media as well and you know, I'm a gospel minister as well. So I think people are just kind of keen to see what their celebrities, mm -hmm. quote unquote, are doing. And um, the fact that we're both in that industry and it was still so under wraps, um, I think was exciting to a lot of people. Um, it turned out in the end, even our culture differences were so exciting. It was like a big talking point for people, you know, mm -hmm. Luo, Kikuyu. Um, so I guess, you know, that in many reasons, plus I've, always been very private about my private life so i just i guess nobody saw it coming it was just like surprise <laughs> we're married <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. did that make you feel uh, a little bit worried knowing that your daughter is very private and here the media is all over that was of a concern for me uh especially when 
you you listen to media and uh, some get character assassinated i there i was very protective knowing what um, kind of girl i brought up and uh, i would have done anything she would have told me to do to keep it the way she would want it and that i did <laughs> some nosy nosy uh, people oh, what's going on oh we hear this we hear that oh and some will just come congratulations I said for what yeah and i'm like oh really she told you <laughs> because i know she, she wouldn't just tell yeah. so i would ask somebody she told you that she's she's getting married she told you she's engaged oh tell me more <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of people would kind of try and play us off each other, mm -hmm. like our families, both even on his side. So, you know, they'd ask questions, but they don't know if it's true. So they're asking in a way to, to get an answer. But um, mm, Confirmation. I think, I mean, and we wanted like a, not a massive, humongous wedding. So we have a very small, I think generally we could say my family is introverted. Well, he gets families extroverted <laughs> and he has a lot more relatives than I do. Hey, <laughs> hello, my people. I love you all very much. But, um, so, you know, there's that too, like the size of the family and then the, who we are. So we've interacted with a whole lot of people. So just narrowing down that guest list was, was hard. But I think, I think we were all sold that we just wanted this to be a very close knit family affair. Because at the end of the day, the marriage is between the two of us and God and bringing our families together. So it was not, we were not looking to, to make a show or to have a spectacle. Because mm -hmm. um, like I said, at the end of the day, the marriage is the one that's most important. So, you know, after that day, all 2,000 of your guests will have gone. Sure. And also, I mean, the truth is, it's not that everybody has the best intentions for you. Yeah. So you kind of just need to learn to... Keep what's most important to you to yourself and guard what's important to your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So for her, as much as she's an introvert, what else? How how was she growing up? Um well at least um she didn't give me trouble other than being a tomboy. I was. Really? I know people don't yeah. believe it right now, but <laughs> I was a tomboy. Like my she mom copied her brothers. To, yeah, I'm the only girl. So I'm the first one and the only girl. And I think up until I was either 10 or 13, all of my cousins on both sides were boys. So I had no, mm -hmm. you know, female cousins. So we'd go to family meetings and like the boys don't want to play with me. And then I can't go chill with the, with the mamas. They're like, go and play with your cousins. I'm like, but they're all boys. <laughs> um, so I was actually quite a tomboy. Um, I never liked dresses, absolutely hated them. I would, I was just fine in jeans and, you know, sneakers. My mom used to do my hair on Sunday mornings and it was like fights. It's poor mother. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, it would be like, you know, cause she'd like things like pink and yellow. And I was just like, oh Lord, like why can't we, you know, do more fun, like masculine colors. <laughs> no, she grew up ministering in church. Yeah. And uh, I was very particular as to how she would present herself, yeah. you know, in church. After all, she was uh, to be at the altar, you know. So it, it, it was important for me, for her to learn at an early age yeah, yeah. <laughs> as to how to present herself. Yeah. So I remember those fights. Uh, you know, I would choose what she would wear and uh, what hairstyle she would wear and shoes. I would put everything out for her to... She would cry and tell her, okay, go cry. When you finish, you come, we dress, we go and minister. <laughs> And she would pick out, like, it's not like she was picking out bad dresses or anything. She got her fashion sense, okay? So she got me really beautiful dresses, like Dubai and London and all these, like, really nice dresses. It's just, I wasn't a girly girl. But I really appreciate that lesson because it's honestly molded me into the person that I am today. So, you know, after this, I'll go ahead and kick back. And I still like my sweatpants and everything like that, but, like, I do think it's important to present myself well. Um, also just cause, you know, it's not, I'm not just doing things for me. First of all, my parents always told every single one of us, my brothers and I, remember whose name you are. Like, remember whose name mm. you're carrying. I am an Omondi, that means something. So, you know, value your family, value, you know, God. Cause at the end of the day, that's who 
I'm an ambassador for. So it was a great lesson to learn at that age, although I was, you know, very stubborn. <laughs> but um, it's definitely molded me into who I am today. And so now when, you know, people tell me, oh, you, I look up to the way you dress. And I mean, I'm just like, thank my moms. <laughs> thank my mother for that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, of course, I wouldn't. I wouldn't imagine you as a tomboy completely. I know. I know. It, it's the same way people don't imagine me as an introvert. Um, I think just because with media, you kind of have to, you know, seem very outgoing. But there's a lot of us who are just after that. We're like, I just need some space. Um, but yeah, I was a bit of a tomboy. But I mean, now I like. I still now I like to dress up. But I mean, I won't do it all the time. I'm not obsessed with my looks in, by any means. Um, so I think for me, as long as I'm presentable and I don't, you know, cause people to stumble or then question my faith or question the God that I serve or question my ministry, um, then I'm good. Okay. So <laughs> talk, talk to us about your fashion sense, you know. <laughs> um, one thing I know is, uh, I'm not so very crazy about fashion that I would really go out of my way to find out what's new, who's wearing what, this kind of a thing. Um, there, is, there is a bit, maybe a little bit more, something to do with design and creativity in my family that um, has blossomed in the sense that uh, growing up I would stitch clothes. I remember my grandmother helping me stitch my uniform when I was about nine years old. And I picked it up from then. So I like stitching. So I would do my own stuff. Yeah. Uh, one thing I know I didn't like is to walk out in town and you find what you have somebody else has and this kind of thing. Either the dress in a parara or in a shona viba and things like that. So I learned how to stitch from a very early age. At form two, I would do things that would go for exhibitions by hand. I would stitch with my hand. I remember making a very nice, beautiful yellow top. So that kind of uh, picked up. And uh, there's a bit of creativity in, in, in my children as well. We, I see it, we see it with them. In fact, one is a creative director, a creative uh, designer. Um, she designs most of her clothes. She designed her own wedding gown, right? So um, the time I was getting married, I designed things for my, my, my bridesmaid. I stitched the dress for my mom. So my principle is keep it simple. Yeah. She actually even stitched my Rurashio dress. Wow. Yeah, one yeah. of my favorite dresses ever. I'm not a very good tailor as such, but uh, this is something that I know I want and I want to produce it. <laughs> so I do it. So um, I, I'm, I'm very cool in, in, in dressing up. I don't like dressing and you are somewhere, everybody is seeing you. Um, I'm, I'm kind of shy to some extent. <laughs> I, I don't like being spotted. I don't like being spotted. So yeah. when people come, oh, you're this, you're that, I feel like, oh, Gwendy, what's going on today? <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I'm very choosy and um, picky as to what to wear and in front of who. <laughs> yeah, so um, th th that's me with fashion. And I, I like it on people. I will tell you it looks very nice. But I imagine how it looks on me, I will have to really modify a lot of things <laughs> to suit me. Yeah, I'm very particular as to how my body looks when I dress. Yeah, so I, I don't like showing off my curvatures so much, things like that. So even if it's a dress that is fitting, it will be fitting in a sense that um, it's not showing curves so much uh, and things like that. And I like to dress and feel comfortable. You know, sometimes you see people are dressing and they are pulling here and they are pulling there. And I said, well, if you need to a shot, why are you still, it won't reach any far and things like that, you know. So wear a dress that when you see it, you know, it has covered where you have wanted it to reach. Yeah. And you're comfortable and you're confident, you know, and you're looking good and smart. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, wow. Now, mm? coming to your first one's wedding day. Mm. So... I'm sure the thought of what am I going to wear really lingered in your mind. One minute. So what exactly, you know, what was the thought process? Okay. Just the one. Just the one. Mm. 
Mm, hook it on the belt here. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. I wasn't moving so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, you seem to be very conscious of how you present also yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, being the first one's wedding day, I mean, this is the first, and the Omondis have to be present. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> what is the thought process of what you're going to wear? What What did you think of when she just told you, yes, we are having this wedding? <laughs> uh, so many things ran through my mind, but one thing I knew I wasn't going to do, wear Akitenge. Yeah, and I was so happy with that. <laughs> that one like was just, out. <laughs> it's the usual thing, I yeah. guess, in Kenyan weddings. I just wanted to be elegant and simple, Yeah. simple as that. You know, I, I didn't want flashy colors and, and things like that, so I really started thinking what should I wear <laughs> yeah. that will still be within my confines, something that will not be out of the blues for me and, and things like that. Uh, she wasn't around. She was still out, you know, finishing her studies. So I just did a few of checking around things and whatnot. And every shop I would go to look for a dress I just didn't like, simply because um, it's stitched nice. It's good. But it's, it's not good for my body. You know, my body matters yeah. because that's what I'm dressing. So I, I decided I'll stitch a dress. Yeah, so I sampled a few tailors, actually gave them some dress to make for me. Didn't tell them what it was all about. So I found one. Yeah. So this tailor actually understood me. Yeah, because uh, I've been to many tailors and, you know, they want to make it like the way they did it for the other one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, bodies are different. So this, this girl really, um, you know, she just appreciated what I was telling her about because she actually went ahead and did it the way she would have wanted. Oh, you have nice curvatures, blah, blah, blah. I said, ah, they're mine. <laughs> yeah, so she did a dress she had to undo. Yeah. She had to undo, and uh, she just did it the way I wanted, and uh, it was okay. You know, she just picked it so quickly, and we didn't have to fight. Yeah, so it was nice. <laughs> okay. So yeah. when it comes to colors, did you have specific colors that you were working around with? Not really. Can you imagine? Not really. Um, because once she was not around, she had not really picked what she wanted, and I didn't want to wear what she was choosing. You know, the idea of the mother of the bride is wearing the colors of the bridesmaid, and I didn't like that. Yeah, I'm not into that either. <laughs> Plus, it was a dinner reception, so yeah. we just knew it needed to be simple and elegant. Mm. Thankfully, the colors she did pick complemented um, yeah. the wedding colors. Mm -hmm. so. so it's not that I, I had particular choice. It's just that I went round, I saw a particular color, it struck me. So I knew I needed a lacy material. So to get the color in my mind on a less material, I did a bit of walking. And I eventually saw it. When I saw it, I just thought, this is it. Just bought it, took it to the tailor. I, you know, I knew how many materials would fit, how many meters would fit me because I do a bit of that. So I just bought and I went and told her what I wanted and she did. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, did it give you like a headache at first, just deciding? Um, the fact that I'm not into what's in town, who's wearing what and what not. No, there was no headache about about a dress that I was going to wear, you know, for the wedding as such. All I knew in my mind is I just wanted to be presentable and uh, simple and, uh, you know, Somebody looking at me who know, yeah, that's a Christian woman who, who has dressed for the wedding. You know, you, you, I, I don't have to go out of my way to dress because it's, it's a wedding day of my daughter. After all, it's her day. <laughs> She's the one who should be catching up and, and things like that. So I, I knew I didn't have that conflict. I knew I didn't have that because I, I, I wanted her to be the happiest. It was her day. And of course, all of us are going to be happy, but... It really didn't stress me. I, I actually I avoided it. I didn't want to be stressed because of a dress. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. So to other mothers of the bride, what can you tell them? 
because sometimes you find uh, a few interviews we've done and uh, the mother like you know uh, she's uh, the bride is here the mother is here you know trying mm. to pace up with the bride what can you say and also the fact uh, you said you need to put your calves for yourself oh yeah some mothers go the other way you know that's that's them you know it's the way you feel as you dress so I wouldn't say it's wrong or it's right. For me, it's how you feel within yourself and how you portray yourself as you dress. So if that's your choice, that's them, you know. But um, what, what I don't like is when suddenly a mother realizes my daughter is getting married and it's like a competition. You know, I think that's not fair in the sense it's not, it's not nice because it's the girl who's getting married. So I think we need to honor the girl at that, at that time. So there's no need of uh, being uptight and competing. After all, as for me, I had my day, I had my time. <laughs> yeah, so in fact, in, in the process of talking at one time, you know, yeah, she, she actually pointed, it's my day. And I said, thank God she knows that. Because if she didn't know it was her day, then it, you know, it's yeah. something else. Yeah, so it, it's, it's her day, and we need to make everything work towards her day, towards making her happy, towards making it culminate around her, because she's the bride. I was a bride 30 years ago, <laughs> and things then have changed, you know, things then are not like, like, like now. So I needed to also move with that so that I'm not so old-fashioned, and uh, because I'm also very conservative. And uh, so it, 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 it just moved on very smoothly. And so when she came, we were doing things together and uh, we were pointing out mistakes for each other. We went around together to look for this, to look for that. So we, we knew what each other, she respects my choices of many things and I respect hers too. So I think it, it moved on well. Moved on very well, yeah. <laughs> we actually ended up planning the wedding together just as you know, the family. Um, and I think for me, I was just very keen. Again, like she said, my mom is conservative. But I think what people don't realize is I'm also conservative, but that doesn't mean that then I'm, you know, boring or out of, mm -hmm. you know, just like I look like I'm from the Stone Age or anything like that. So um, we knew we wanted something comfortable because that's key for me as well. But I think just to... I wanted to stand by my mom and just feel proud like yes mom you did that like she looked amazing <laughs> and um for me that was really great so it just it, it, it was a joy for all of us that you know she looked great um no one was competing with anyone mm -hmm. like there's this you know the the usual dramas that people have mm -hmm. like we just yeah. we didn't have that yeah. Um, yeah so it was mm -hmm. great okay so mm -hmm. what did you design your dress in particular what did you want in your dress what did you um do? Yeah. I knew that I wanted something comfortable. Again, um, maybe also just having done a lot of events and media things, like I just don't want to be fussing with, you know, an outfit the whole day. All your pictures are you like this, <laughs> pulling off something or, you know, shifted, like all your wedding pictures, it's just mm. going to be ruined. Like, <laughs> so I didn't want that. I wanted something that um, was comfortable, that was... I'm, I'm a very simple but elegant person, so I don't think it's about, you know, dramatics, like I need to have 50 pounds of, I don't know, crystals and I'm just, ain't nobody got time for that. Plus it's six hours, yeah. you know, like, I just, I just don't want to spend the time either changing and you're not enjoying your wedding day. So I wanted something that literally, as I walked down the aisle, I wanted to take Ohiga's breath away. And I wanted it to be a gown that even the guys who, the family and the friends that had gathered around us would, would look and see, wow, this is not just a, this is not a girl anymore. This is a young woman. This is now someone's wife. And um, for me, the most important thing is the inner beauty that translates outside. So, you know, my dress was a reflection of my values. It's a reflection of my personality. And um, I've seen, you know, on YouTube how all the stories of, you know, girls with like the dresses that are like super low cut. And then if you're Catholic and you're being given sacrament and then it... 
Utangukazi kwa chini alafu Priesta kwa hapo ati no thank you. So and I mean we've both been in ministry our, our families are very involved mm-hmm. in church so we knew we'd have a lot of you know <laughs> pastors and <That's> bishops. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like we're not about to spoil the family name on the wedding day. <laughs> um so yeah one, I just wanted something comfortable. One thing I know she mentioned um she kept on insisting that she didn't want a, a ball gown she wanted a wedding dress yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's the time i learned there was a ball ball gown and a wedding dress yeah. and me in particular when i was getting my my my, my clothing i i don't like to stand there and the dress is over be, behind me on that side. even my wedding gown was just within myself here but uh, she had a small trail uh, it's called what a trail yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with it and it looked pretty Yeah so um he said it it's got to be specific because it's for a wedding you can't wear a wedding dress and then you can just walk out for another party like with a dinner, it like as if pass with the same yeah. I so she was that. she was very particular about that yeah, yeah. I but mean, I, also cuz i mm. i know what my body type is and i know how i like to look you know with my body type i knew where where my most like uncomfortable you know if i'm going to be like all up in the place like am i okay like just you know with my hands all over my chest exposed i know what fits my body well i know how to accentuate my shape without it being um promiscuous or overly done or anything like that so um and at the end of the day like we did so many tests cuz i wanted to make sure i need to be able to sit down comfortably mm. <laughs> and most importantly i need to be able to dance in my dress <laughs> so we did like a million we'll give you tests when you were trying out the mm. dress <laughs> yeah. just to make sure that i could yeah it has you know, happened because yeah. um i i i know recently there was a wedding and the dress just snapped <laughs> you know you just move a bit and and then it's snapped and she had made up her mind that she was going to dance yeah yeah but what what blew me also about her, her dress is the long sleeves i think after a long long time we'd not seen a bride in long sleeves and she had made one with long sleeve but because of the net it was looking very yes. nice the way she she had gotten it done yeah, <laughs> yeah. so she she wanted a dress that she, she would remove when she was going to sleep she yeah, didn't want I, to I change knew I wasn't and changing. I yeah. didn't want like three gowns or anything mm. like that. So whatever I was wearing the material needed to be comfortable enough that no, I'm not like get this thing off me and it's only been, you know, an hour. Mm-hmm. Um like I said, I wanted to spend most of the time with our guests with my husband and not in a changing room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are some of the highlights of the wedding day? What what would you like to share? Highlights. Oh gosh. Best moments. Hilarious, funny. Ooh. <laughs> I think well it rained like crazy um just like literally exactly horrid. at the time of the ceremony it was horrid rain but i mean that's a blessing and i see it as a blessing it rained at my parents wedding rained at my wedding mm. and then when i was coming you know to sort of launch my ministry it rained again when i was turning so i was just like lord okay clearly this is a sign from you so i kind of take that as a blessing but um just that and having you know the people that we had it was a family affair um so wahiga's dad and brother walked him down the aisle his brother was the best man um our moms walked down together hand in hand down the aisle um at the reception we didn't have this thing for sides you know they sat on the same table both mm-hmm. our parents um so it was just very family like our mm-hmm. siblings were the ones in the line and some close friends um and then just the fun like we were up until i think 4 in the morning just dancing and having a good time and the location was really magical like it was beautiful lake naivasha at sawela Um so yeah it was a, it was a great day and just the whole union and just seeing those two cultures come together and really just I think at the end of the day just feeling God's presence with us mm-hmm. there was something very profound and it's it's not something you can hold and you know show you but it just just to know I think I just feel and yeah God is is pleased with this mm-hmm. union and there's something he wants to do through mm-hmm. it so yeah it was great Did you cry when you were walking down there? I cried in the room. <laughs> I cried first of all. Um 
when we were driving down to Naivasha that morning, it was beautiful. Like the sun, everything was just amazing. Um, then li literally minutes to like 10 minutes, I think, to the time the ceremony was, was to, to start. start. <laughs> and it was a garden. Pouring. It started like drizzling. So I remember my maid of honor being like, don't worry, this one. But <laughs> well, then it got a little harder. Um, and she's like, don't worry, it will be okay. It will be okay. And then it's like El Nino just opened and the whole heavens erupted with rain. It was intense. <laughs> so of course now we had to switch things around and move things and change the ceremony location. Mm -hmm. um, so we were getting late. So I remember Wahiga, like really, I was told later he was super tense and his mom kept coming and sending people <laughs> just to make sure what? like you're still with us, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I guess that's part of the thing about weddings, you know, like not everything will be mm -hmm. perfect. And even if it is, great. But if it's not, again, remember, at the end of the day, it's not about the wedding. It's about the marriage. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's it's a test of, you know, uh, what are you committed to? Because I think a lot of times people, you know, you can idolize your wedding day. Sure. And you forget, mm -hmm. you know, even in the planning, like it's all about you. Mm -hmm. Forget what your husband wants. Forget what his family wants. Forget, like it's just all about you and you <laughs> idolize your wedding day. Yeah. And that really, I mean, on a day like that, that can just sow the worst seeds for mm. your for your union. I mean, and mm. it's for better for worse, till death do you part. So, um, you know, it was, mm. I cried in the room, just, I think I was emotional there with the rain, just all the different emotions that I was experiencing. But as I walked down the aisle, oh, and I cried in the car, like right before I stepped out, I was like... <gasps> I was, oh my gosh, it was so hard to breathe. Because <laughs> um, I saw my dad now and he was coming to walk me down the aisle, which was very special for me. That was a childhood prayer. And um, yeah, but as soon as I, as my feet hit the ground to start walking, I was just, it was just this overwhelming sense of peace and just really deep joy. Um, and I smiled. Well, he almost cried, but he won't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for hinting. Were you always it raising a talented kid? Um, knowing uh, again um, the the kind of uh, uh, talent that is out there and what people do with their talent, I I found myself really guarding her and uh, protecting. Um, to an extent that even when it came to the wedding and she's like, I don't want people to know this. I don't want, you know, for me, it was like, uh, I, I know, <laughs> I understand, you know, and uh, being two key people in the social media, you know, we, even as a family, we really didn't want to open social media and all you're reading is about your daughter and she's done this, she's like this. She's, and not all reports will come genuinely true, and not all reports will come honest and things like that. And uh, knowing her makeup, you know, from the inside, I, I thought it was important that as she prepares to get into her marriage, you know, it, it is guarded and she enters with joy, with peace, with the love of God, not hating people and feeling bad about this one said that, this one did that and, you know, it was not true, you know. And Joyce is one person whose, you know, honesty is one thing that really strikes a very high note in her. So to imagine somebody in the media would come and just say something negative about her, I wasn't ready for that myself. <laughs> so um, it, it was kind of easy to keep things. For me, you tell me uh, it, it's a secret. Even before you finish talking, it's already kept in a box. <laughs> So it, it, it was okay, you know, people really didn't know so much as to what was going and it was like, oh, just come out, just like that. Yeah, we thank God, and um, the idea that we didn't put in a wedding committee and things like that, put things actually down. Because even as parents, we sat down and we asked ourselves, what do we want for our children? And we'd have meetings in our home, my uh, nyawanas would come, uh, we would talk from the house, we would have tea, 
and uh, we'll go to some restaurant somewhere. We are having lunch, but we are talking about planning things and things like that. And it would basically be just the six of us, yeah. me and my husband, Joyce and Wahiga, and her parents. Yeah. Uh, but so. actually, even for the wedding <laughs> venue, because I was still in the States, so the five of them found the wedding venue. Mm. We did, I think, the first meeting when I was still in the States, and the wedding venue was found and booked. I hadn't seen it. Mm-hmm. But again, I'm not like a bridezilla, so I was just like, whatever, it's cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I saw it, like I think, two or three months to the wedding. And it was mm-hmm. the perfect choice because, again, this is my family. They know what I'm about. They know you know, what we wanted. And I trusted Wahika too. So for me, it was a blessing to have mm-hmm. a husband that was involved in the process because, again, the day is about the two of us and not mm-hmm. me. So when it comes to her music, are you the one who discovered that hey, she can sing, she sang in the bathroom, and she has <laughs> <laughs> Is the radio on or what? How was it for her? Um, for interesting, because I can't quite remember whether it was her third or fourth birthday. It's the father uh, who, who bought her a toy piano. Um, and it would make just the eight, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, that's all. So for some reason, you know, uh, she would go, tun, 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 and she, it's like, tun, tun, tun. And then suddenly it would be like she would knock those notes, and the minute she reaches the last one, she would just burst out laughing. Laughing and she would fall on, you know, a little three or four year old, falling backwards, <coughs> laughing. And you know, I would tell the father, what's wrong with this girl? And this thing, there is something here. You know, I, it didn't quite come out so very fast that it is music that is tickling her like that. So that thing was so dear to her. You know, she, she would just twang, twang, and she would laugh every other time. So by the time she was about six, seven years old, the father decided to buy her a, a whole piano. Like an upright piano. Yeah, so she already had started some uh, music lessons. And, you know, that is what she quite didn't like, uh, to go to for music lessons. Yeah. So I, I would be there to push and press on that because I would tell her, no, music you will not be like the way you're doing it. You have to be taught how to do it. I come from a musical family myself. So I remember taking her, sitting in the car, waiting for her to come out. Sometimes she would come out angry, sometimes she would come out laughing. But uh, she loved that piano and it helped her to really find her place and, and we were just more than happy that uh, to date, you know, uh, she has that piano in her house. And uh, forever I've been so grateful to my husband who have even thought of buying, investing in such a thing for her. Yeah, so um, it just came out that she loved singing. Interesting, she never sang so much in the choir, but uh, she was on the instrument. I used to play. Um, yeah, I was on the worship the team yeah. since I was six years old. Mm-hmm. And I used to play the piano. I never really wanted to sing. Mm. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> I never really wanted to sing. I was very fine just playing the piano. Yeah. So when the female worship leaders at my church, they set up a group and they were like, yeah, we want you to be part of us. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll play the piano for you. But they're like, no, 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 we want you to sing and lead songs. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about that. Um, and it's not like I was ever able to write songs. I could write tunes on the piano but had never, you know, written songs with lyrics and things. So actually there's a song that I tried writing. It took me three years. It went, it started in Kenya. I went with it to the US. I studied abroad in Spain at one point, came back to Kenya, still didn't finish it. It was so horrible. It didn't even end up on my first album. (laughs) So um, I guess growing up, I never imagined I would be an artist, but I've always loved music and mm. just going to that piano was a way that I would express myself. Yeah. I have a song for every emotion. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's where I would you know now also being introverted and very private, yeah. it's where I would literally just pour out everything. So mm. um anyway, thankfully my songs, you know, are written through life experience, my walk with God and devotions and the scripture. And so my first single Conqueror was, you know, birthed out of a lot of different trying times that my family went through and just that prom it was a song I was telling myself like you know as I was praying like we are conquerors and we will get through this and na 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 mm. 
um, it was like a testimony that wow I can't believe you've actually been through this um, and yeah I still have the piano she said every single one of my songs has been written on it so mm -hmm. it's a very it's one of those earthly possessions that I'm like Mungu baba atakai na zaida bigumi takuwa na kuchezea zaidi I remember her growing up uh, you know she, she would either come from school and uh, school bag would be thrown there she would be straight on the piano mm -hmm. she would start quietly and softly and then suddenly she would be up there and singing and so loud so I would knock she wouldn't even hear and she would say hey 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 why are you so loud you know then uh, slowly I got to know if she would have an issue she wants to express herself you know maybe somebody has annoyed her at school <laughs> the music would just go loud yeah. you know? uh, and okay. the reason I didn't like the lessons was because I mean the sight reading right but I, I guess I realized then my skill wasn't in sight reading it was just yeah. playing whatever came out of my heart so if mm -hmm. you're telling me to play this one that I've given you I never enjoyed that mm -hmm. which is why I never liked the music lessons but when I'd sit at the piano, you know, no one was telling me anything and I didn't even have an idea of what I was mm. doing. I'd just play and something would come out and it would be great. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and now your ministry. Yeah. <clears throat> Talk about your ministry. So um, I've just released my second album. It's called, or I released it in October last year. It's called Spirit vs. Soul. And um, my first album was Conqueror, named after my debut single. And I'm just really excited to be back at um, releasing music and just sharing, you know, my heart um, and who I believe God is and his message for, you know, everyone. So um, I believe music is a very powerful instrument and it will always take you where it's come from. So mm -hmm. if, you know, the, the heart or the motive, the spirit behind the music is not right it's not going to do much for you mm -hmm. so um it's me really it's a challenge just to say you know what god this is so important to you he's created us to worship him and above that to worship him in spirit and in truth and so i just feel you've given me this gift and i need to be able to to use it for your glory and to be able to account for what i've done with it one day so <laughs> It's been an exciting journey. I'm really excited. I mean, I had released Konkara. I was hosting a TV show and then I left. <laughs> uh, what seemed very abruptly for most people. But I had already actually told them a year before, I'm only going to stay for a year because I'd already been accepted to school. Um, but even while I was away, just to have people still talk about my music or ask for you know more songs and just to hear more from me and my work with God was very humbling um, and to come back and people are still keen on that is a big blessing so um, I'm excited uh, so far from this new album I've released three singles Lihimidi Jinalake, Perfect Gift and just three weeks ago Jabali so yeah and more music is coming mm -hmm. okay. and mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be you know Pastor, you know, something yeah. like that. <laughs> Why that, yeah? yeah I, just, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. But like, even when I was hosting a show, people would always assume I'm a pastor. Um, and then just a few weeks ago, or actually a week ago, I think it was, I was in a meeting with um, some church guys, including my bishop and pastors. And... Um, they keep calling me pasta. So I'm just like, eh, hey, Lord, no, 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 no. Story of pasta, me, I'm okay. See, I'm still doing ministry. And me for now. <laughs> so now that you've said pasta, I'm like, um, again. Is it a sign? Yeah, I'm like, Lord, what's going on? <laughs> Let's talk about this. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, I've not been to Bible school. I'm actually an economist by training. <laughs> um, and I have a master's in international development. But I believe that um, I've been graced to go, what I, I like to say, from the pulpit to the boardroom. So I believe that, you know, I'm well educated, I've done well in school, um, but I also have this gift. So my gift is to minister to the hearts and souls of men and my intellect is also to minister to them, but as far as social economic development, which is what I'm passionate about as well. So, hearts and minds, you know? They're still together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so how do you balance work, music, career, mm. and now family? Um, <laughs> I think it's just God's grace, but also I think sometimes maybe we underestimate ourselves as women because you'd find like, you know, we never ask men, how do you balance mm-hmm. do your business? How do you balance mm-hmm. yeah, your children? How do you balance mm-hmm. side hustle? You know, we, d- we never ask them those things. So I think as women, maybe we underestimate ourselves and the, the grace and the strength that God has given us. Mm-hmm. And um, for me, first and foremost, because I'm a Christian and because my life is surrendered to him, everything that I do is centered on God. Um, and I'm grateful to have my mom as an example, you know, being raised um, by her in her household and just seeing how she conducted her business. At the end of the day, it's about being a Proverbs 31 woman, right? So being industrious with the resources I've been given, being loving to my husband, loving to my family. So um, I think it's, it's the, I think at the end of the day, it's really just surrender. So it's because I know that I'm not trying to live for myself. Um, There's a higher calling to which I've been called. There's a higher purpose. There's more to life than just what I want and how I feel and all that jazz. So, um, yeah. Okay. And uh, what's your overall advice to mothers of brides in terms of getting to choose the right dress, how to maneuver your business on the wedding day? Mm -hmm. What's your advice? I think first and foremost, foremost, one needs to know what they want because I think there are many motives, needs and uh, displays and whatnot about weddings. So if one has in their mind what kind of a wedding they want, they can begin from there. But um, I, I would still say keep it simple. We've had many people getting into debts because of that wedding day, matter of hours. Yeah. I would tell anyone, don't go and borrow money for a wedding. And in fact, even pastors in our church keep telling us, you know, if you see any young girl, they're struggling. It's, it's not about the pomp and ceremony. It's actually about God in their lives and how they will leave the two of them together. So weddings sometimes in Kenya have been made to be a show off, you know. We, we, we want to show off, we have muscle about this, we have, you know, money to do this and the other. And um, praise God that the marriage should continue. But the saddest bit for me will be after all that, and then the, the marriage is no more, it's not good. So um, I, would, I would tell young girls getting married to think of their life thereafter. It's not, it does end at the wedding day. It's beginning. It's beginning. Because they need to think about the ugali they will eat thereafter, the children they will want to raise, where they will want to live. So if they have money, they rather invest it for the future yeah. than spend all of it for a matter of hours. For I went. People that will still yeah, complain about your food. about the food, so about everything. Them, like, that yeah, people will always that, and then complain. Going to go and eat ugali and skuma yes. for the rest of the week, girl. By two o'clock, I was in church. By six o'clock, I'd been married. The ceremony was over. We were going home. 